Welcome back to The Painting Coach and in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to paint these brand new murder bots and Necron flayed one. If this is your first time on the channel and you'd like to learn how to paint your Warhammer miniatures, learn new techniques and find out all about this great hobby then please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit that bell so you're notified of all my latest videos. Okay, let's get going with this Necron flayed one. So they're going to be fairly straightforward. They're not too difficult to do. They're just a little bit small and fiddly. So hopefully uh, we can crack on in good time with this. So I've primed the model with lead belcher. If you can't get hold of lead belcher spray, then uh, don't worry. Just prime it black and then paint some lead belcher over it. And the first thing we're going to do, take some Balthazar gold. Get a little bit on the brush. And what we're going to do is we're looking to paint the carapace and all the kind of bits of armour uh, that this Necron has got on his uh, on his body. We're going to leave this top bit of carapace because we're going to do that a, a lighter colour. We're following the Sarkan dynasty scheme here. Uh, so just work your way around. Find all these little bits of armour. Don't forget the feet and the hands. And then we'll come back and we'll give it all a shade. If you make any mistakes and you get it on some of the metal, then just take some lead belcher uh, to touch it up. So once that Balthazar gold is done, uh, what we want to do is we want to shade the whole miniature with some nylon oil. I say the whole miniature, it doesn't matter if you get it on some of the other bits that are going to be a bit lighter, but essentially what we're looking for is the anything that we've just done with Balthazar gold, anything that's going to be silver in the end. So there's a fair bit to do, so we'll just work our way around it. As usual, there's not much to see while I'm uh, popping the nylon oil on. So what I'll do is I'll talk about my brush. You know, the eagle-eyed among you will realise that this isn't the normal brush I use. This is a, a red grass games brush. It's synthetic, so it's probably a little better for using uh, metallics and washes. Uh, so I realise I need to be a little kinder to my brushes and uh, not use my good ones for uh, for the metals and things like that. So that's why I'm using the red grass game synthetic and I've got to say it's pretty pretty good it's uh, standing up pretty well so if you want to check out red grass games you can do using the link in the description I don't get any kickback for it it's just uh, they do send me some stuff occasionally uh, and it is uh, stuff that I really do like so feel free to use that link otherwise get that all covered in nylon oil let it dry properly uh, we'll come back and we'll start the uh, the, the kind of the top carapace there once we're happy that null oil's dry, we're just going to take some Canoptec alloy and we're going to put this on the top plates here. Now this is a, a layer paint, so you may need a couple of coats just to get it on and cover it, covering properly. And the other place we want to put it is just on the face plate. So the back of the face, the back of the head there is kind of silver and the face plate, the bits not covered in flesh at least, are going to be canoptec alloy so just pop that on take your time and then we'll come back and uh, shade it next and when we shade it too much we're going to give it kind of spot shades just to darken parts of it when it comes to shading the canoptec alloy we just want to use a little bit of agrax earth shade so we don't want to go wild uh, but where we've got you know the teeth we can pop it in there but what we're looking for essentially is these little dents uh, and rents in the armor where the Obviously, they've taken some hits. It's just kind of chipped away into some of the darker parts uh, of it then. And that's all really we're doing with this. So it should be a fairly quick job. Make sure you do all the bits you painted with Canoptic Alloy. And then we'll come back and start highlighting all the metals. First off, we'll highlight the gold. And the colour we're going to use for that is Sycorax Bronze, Sycorax Bronze, Tomato, Tomato, Potato, Potata. Depends how you want to pronounce it. Uh, but a little bit on the brush, not too much. Um, and essentially what we're looking to do is just kind of catch the, the raised areas of this this gold, sharper areas there. Looking to pick out some of the kind of, kind of almost highlight some of these dents. Just to add uh, a little bit of brightness to the gold that we've you know, obviously really dulled down with that shade. So work your way around, catch as many edges as you want. Again, this is entirely, you know, it's your model, paint it how you want. It's, it, you know, if you don't want to do all these little highlights, you don't have to. Uh, but for me, I just find they add a little bit. So get that done and we'll come back and do the silver next. For highlighting the silver, we're going back to the old faithful, which I had a little bit of a panic call just now because I couldn't find it. Uh, it turned out it was right under my nose. So 
just had a little boy's look but it's chrome from Vallejo Model Air again it's not thinned down because it's designed to go through an airbrush so just make sure I haven't got too much on your brush what we're looking at to do is just catch along the kind of the sharpest edges for you know things like the flensing claws here because it's not it's easy to get a nice sharp highlight for the areas that we've done with the canoptic alloy we just want to catch those edges with the chrome as well just to make them a little bit more shiny then any other bits of the metallics that you know if you want to make it stand out and be a bit brighter again my brush is splitting there but it's not too much of an issue you can catch those edges nice and easily and you can see there under the light uh, from filming that it gives a bit of a bit of a nice kind of shiny element to the metal so just work your way around you can do as much or as little of this as you want but what I would say is when you come to the claws and the hooks and anything like that anything that's going to tear at flesh just make sure to give it a, a bit of you know a bit of extra care and, and brighten it up because obviously they're the sharpest edges uh, and then once that's done we'll come back uh, and we'll get a, we'll get the tube in and the last few kind of matte colours of the armour done and then we'll go on to some of that f uh, flayed skin just to finish off the bits of the armour, now some of this is going to be a little bit tough to see on the video, so I, I hope you can kind of make sense of it. But we're just going to use some uh, Black Templar contrast paint, and we're going to use this to paint that kind of uh, Necron icon in the middle of the chest. And also any bits of wire that you can, you know, or tubing that you can find, you can paint that as well. So, like I say, I appreciate it's really difficult to see that on the camera because it's so small and it's folded under. Um, but you can, hopefully you get the idea. So do that, come back, and then we'll uh, we'll get onto that flayed skin next. So I've just painted the base black just to kind of let me see where everything is and just make it a bit easier uh, in terms of the camera. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to um, or go on and, and, and paint the flesh. So I'm going to base it with uh, Iron Arc skin, uh, and I'm back to my trusty Windsor and Newton Series Seven. What we're looking to do is we just want to base all the bits of flesh that we've got hanging off this model. So you can see there it's not covering perfectly. So I'm going to let it dry and give it a second coat. And then when we come back we'll start to layer in some of the that bruised and decaying element of, of the flesh. So make sure you cover all the flesh on the model. This one's got it on him. You know, he's got a face on, he's got part of an arm here which looks pretty cool. Some fingers that have been degloved. Top tip, never Google degloving injuries. It's absolutely horrific. It's something we learn at first aid at work. Um, yeah, that's not nice. So stay away from that. Uh, you have been warned. So get all that done, uh, two coats, and then we'll come back and start to work it up to make it look really, uh, really disgusting. Once we've got that iron arc flesh down, we're going to highlight it. And the colour we're going to use for this is deepkin flesh. So you can see it's a nice kind of really pallid, greeny flesh colour. Uh, in terms of how we're going to apply this, don't worry too much. Obviously, don't get it on the metal, but just basically highlight almost all of what you've painted with the Iron Arc Flesh. And make sure you've got a nice coverage as well. So it may mean that you need to add a, a kind of a second coat on there. But just work your way around and, and make sure you cover everything. Just leaving that Iron Arc Flesh in the darker recesses. Get that done, and then when we come back, we'll uh, we'll add that colouring into it, and we're going to use contrast paints, contrast medium for that. So that should be nice and fun. Get that done, get this finished, and we'll come back and do that. So the first colour we're going to use to shade this is some Magos purple, and this is mixed with contrast medium, just one to one. What's really important to do is wipe the brush on some paper towel or tissue before you come and and kind of pop it on the model and what we're looking to do with this is just looking to catch the kind of the lower areas any recesses that we've got on there and what you'll see is that actually it's hardly showing up at all to start with but as we start to build those layers it'll really sort of come and come to the fore and what we're looking to do is just work this down into the, the edges just gently like that and I've probably I've got a little bit more on my brush so you can actually see those colors uh, building it up but just work your way around the model again if you're not sure on, on what it is meant to look like or where you're supposed to be putting it just just check the box art and look for where you've got these purple areas because there's quite a few on there because it shows the distress nature of the skin where obviously those flensing claws have been uh, 
having a little bit of a dabble. So work your way around the model, get all that done, build it up until you're really happy. I'm probably going to put maybe two, maximum three coats of this Magos purple on, and then we'll come back with a bit of a darker colour just to add that bruising. When you're happy that Magos purple is dry, we're going to go back in now. The colour we're going to use is Shyish purple or Sheesh purple, I'm not sure how you say it, but... We're doing the same thing so we've mixed it one to one with contrast medium and we want to make sure that we've got hardly any of it on our brush because this is going to be quite powerful so what again what we're looking to do is we just want to add that into those deepest recesses and where we've got the model kind of where we've got the flesh connecting around these pins because that's where it's going to be uh, perhaps most sore so just paint it into those darkest recesses if you go a little bit heavy like I have there just pull it about a bit so that you've not got so much in the same place and what we're looking to do is work our way around the model popping this into those deepest areas you can use a kind of stippling motion almost in some parts just to to kind of vary the tone so again don't you put as much of this on as the Magos purple but you can see there straight away it's, you're starting to get that effect of that uh, really mottled skin so we'll come back and we'll we'll do a final highlight that'll be the flesh done to bring some of that uh, lighter kind of decayed color back we're just going to go back to the um the deacon flesh here and i've thinned it down a little bit i've got plenty on my brush not, but what i'm looking to do i'm looking to just kind of stipple this along those kind of raised areas and this will help give that uh, mottled effect you can see on some of the the box art skin so just take your time with it and because I've thinned it down it's it's gonna be very thin you might not see the the benefit of it straight away so what you're doing is you're just building texture up on the skin this way rather than pulling pulling it like you would perhaps with a with a line highlight and this is you know this is good for then covering over some areas where you may have gone a bit thick or made any mistakes so let it dry decide if you're happy with it if you are great if you're not you can go in and just add some more kind of stabby stabby dots in the stippling method um and then we're, we're pretty much done we're getting there with this guy so we've just got the eyes uh to do and we'll put some dried blood on those flensing claws as well now i'm going to try and show you the eyes um and as you know eyes are not my uh, <laughs> forte on on camera because of the the angle of the dangle uh so i'm going back to my red grass games brush just because it's a bit thicker my white's a bit thin but all we're looking to do with some white skies just paint those eyes and hopefully that's in focus and you can see what i've done Let's just paint it if you're feeling frisky and you want to paint the the necron icon on the chest you can i'm going to leave it because you can't really see it at all so let that dry and we'll make them glow next to make the eyes glow, just want to use a little bit of Tesseract Glow. Make sure you haven't got too much on your brush. And pop it in over the white that you've just done. Nice and simple. Don't worry too much if some of it spills onto the, the flesh. Because it just adds that kind of real basic OSL effect. So let that dry. And we'll come back to some dried blood on these flensing claws. And that's pretty much the flayed one done. So what we want to do is just take some of this corn red. Make sure you've got a good amount on your brush. And we're just going to use this to, like that kind of stippling effect, we're just going to stab it onto uh, the flensing claws just to kind of simulate uh, blood. Now this is a dried blood. If you want to go for a, a fresher blood, you could potentially use blood for the blood god here. But I'm just looking to build up some noise with the the corn red by kind of stippling it on there now what i've done here is i've taken that um what's left of the uh, shyish purple and i've just put it there and i'm going to mix this with the the red just to get a darker kind of more clotted color make sure you've got too much on your brush and i'm going to use this just over that same area just to simulate where we you know you've got some more blood clotted and the and the, and the red is just really that um what well, the corn red is the brighter and what really sells it is when you've got these kind of specks of blood just along there as well 
So do that on all the friends and claws, any hooks, and then I'm going to touch up the base a little bit, but this Necron Flayed one is done. So there we have it. This little Necron Flayed one is done. A nice simple video to get him ready for the table quickly. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like and a comment down below. It really does help me improve the content of the channel to make sure that you're getting the content you want to see. If you'd like to support me, then you can do using the links in the description. There's a link for my Patreon where you get exclusive access to me, an exclusive monthly live frequently asked questions session, as well as some uh, exclusive content and access to my Discord. There's also the links for Goblin Gaming, where you can get up to 20% of all your wargaming needs. And there's my Amazon recommended equipment list as well. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.